All right, uh, my name is Dave Ratt, and today I'm going to do a little video about the importance of heat and thermal effects on doing sound for live events. Um, when we do sound in the various venues, uh, we worry about the different surfaces, covering the audience, making sure everybody can hear, pointing the speakers in the right direction. Um, I believe not enough people pay attention to the importance of what's happening thermally in the venue. And the temperature of the venue can have a significant effect on the way the sound covers the room. Uh, we go in and um, set everything up, listen to it, tune the system, and then the people come in. And if they're not the exact same temperature as the venue, they're going to generate heat uh, compared to the cooler air. The sound comes out of the speaker and uh, the warm humid air of the audience forms a, a layer and the sound will hit that layer, accelerate a bit and actually refract off of that layer upwards causing it to get duller on the uh, floor and uh, increase the high frequency or disperse the high frequency up in the um, upper areas. One way to, the, the, it's worse when um, the speakers are very low, when they're not flown, if they're parallel to the audience and they're just skimming right across. If you can get the speakers up higher and uh, begin to penetrate that thermal layer, um, you have a better chance of getting, it, getting through it. All in all, the more consistent a venue is thermally, the more predictable the sound will be. Uh, I actually alter the temperature of the room. If I'm doing an arena, I have them turn off the air handlers, air conditioners, if it's cold outside, close the doors, um, you know, the merchandisers will be loading in and out. Those cool drafts actually affect the sound. And um, once you get that room sealed up and everybody's warm and the temperature of the room all stabilizes, that's when it starts to sound good. That's that three or four song in on a good show. That's that full venue sound. That's one of the aspects that's overlooked. So I built a little test rig to demonstrate that. And what I've done is I've got a pan over here with my high quality panning. Um, a little Ivy real-time analyzer. It's a third octave. It's very old and crude, but it, uh, it works. And there's a mic sticking out of the top right here. And um, we're mainly going to be looking at the high frequencies. Uh, also, what I've done is I've taken a heat gun and I've taped it to a keyboard stand and it's pointed slightly upward along the um, path of the speaker. And then over here, um, is a speaker and it's actually a, a highly directional uh, it's called a sound laser I bought this on on the internet um, and what it does it's different than a normal speaker but it's good for this test because a normal speaker is not directional enough what I'm trying to do is simulate uh, what happens with a venue where we have much longer distances than I'm able to recreate here in my living my uh, workroom uh, so this very directional speaker is aimed at the microphone and this heat gun's in between. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up. I've got pink noise running to it. Now this speaker is actually very directional. If I take my, I should be able to, I don't know if that's reflecting into the mic or not, but so it sounds coming out of the speaker past the heat gun and hitting the analyzer here. Let's go ahead and zoom into that. And as we can see, we've got some high frequency energy there, as well as you can see the sound of my voice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the heat gun and you'll be able to hear that and see it as well. And as you can see, the high frequency energy has uh, significantly dropped in level. Uh, that's, I've got a 3 dB per measure, so that's like 15 dB of drop 
of high frequency energy when I turn the heat gun on. And I'll go ahead and turn the heat gun off. And as soon as the cool air starts to settle in, it comes back in. If I wave my hands around, there we go, and get the rest of the heat out of the way. And there it comes up all the way. So let's go ahead and do that again. Now, it could be the wind, right? If you think it's a wind, I can actually blow the heat out of the way with my hands. Let me do that right here. I can. I'm waving my hands in there and um, cause it to return and I'll turn it off. Cool. Uh, also to demonstrate that it's not just the wind that's causing this, I've got a hair dryer here. Hair dryer. Whoa, there goes my light. And we're not going to be able to demonstrate the hair dryer. There we go. And oh, it's on hot. Hold on. Here's the hair dryer. Right, let's go ahead and continue on. Um, all right, what else do we got? Oh, let's demonstrate the... I'm going to unscrew the camera. And I'll do a quick demonstration of this uh, high-frequency sound. So that um, should demonstrate the effect of heat. Yes, the heat gun's hotter um, and than the audience is, but we're also dealing with much shorter distances. So I've increased the heat and used a high directional, highly directional speaker to simulate this um, real world event that we run into as sound engineers. All right, hope that helps.